Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Makeup and Wake Up. This week's episode is going to be about abolishing the police. If you haven't watched the first two episodes of Makeup and Wake Up, I really recommend you go back and watch those episodes before you watch this one. I feel like you'll have a better understanding of why abolishing the police needs to happen and how things became so corrupt. Prison abolition and police abolition have a lot of the same ideas, so watching the prison abolition episode first will definitely help you better understand police abolition as well. But obviously we are going to get into police abolition today. Before we get started, I want to make sure that you guys know that I am not an expert. My sister that helps me do these videos is not an expert. These videos are very surface level and really meant to be an introduction on the topic along with making the topic feel a little bit more comfortable and also have access to the information in a really digestible way. So the idea of abolishing the police can be a very scary idea and I definitely was one of those people a few months ago. I definitely was someone who was out here asking the what if questions, what if I'm in danger, how could we possibly abolish the police? What would that look like for crime? What would that look like for serial killers? I'm a big true crime junkie. My automatic thoughts were how the heck is crime going to be managed and solved? But when you think about it, our police system is all our society really knows. And I think that contributes to a lot of people not being able to imagine a society without prisons and police, which when you think about it is kind of concerning considering our society's only way of fighting crime is by policing areas and throwing people in cages. We don't really have any other action plan for fighting crime. And a lot of times the police show up after a crime is already committed. So I think to understand how racism is truly ingrained in our current policing is to understand the history of police in America and sort of how how it came to be, why we have a police system in America. In the South, in the 1700s and the 1800s, policing sort of started as slave patrols, so that had a heavy focus on runaway slaves, so there would be slave patrols to sort of make sure that doesn't happen, or those people would be hired to catch runaway slaves. So that was happening in the South, obviously, where slavery was happening, but in the North, police departments were created in the mid-1800s to back people who were on labor strike. So the North decided to create these sort of policing groups to help battle that. And it's important to recognize the history of policing in America because policing in America was founded on the ideas of wanting to suppress marginalized communities that threaten the status quo of the life of the rich white American. And to sort of tie things into modern day policing, when we see a police officer perhaps press his knee up against a black man's neck and hold it there until he dies, that police officer is literally doing what policing in America looks like. When there is police brutality against black people, those police officers in the moment literally believe that that is what their job is. It is ingrained in our police officers to maintain the status quo and suppress marginalized people because that is what policing in America was founded on. So let's think about what a police officer does, what their, what their job is, and what we think that they do. So when we think about what a police officer does, I'm sure the majority of us thinks that they catch the bad guy and keep our community safe. When in reality, police officers actually spend most of their day answering to non-violent calls. So noise disturbances and traffic violations and parking violations. And actually data shows that nine out of 10 911 calls are actually non-violent encounters. So 
noise disturbances and just just stupid things that people call 911 about on a daily basis and the majority of those things are non-violent situations. And another thing that we often like to forget when talking about police is that police come after a crime is already committed. So if you got hurt by someone else, a police officer didn't prevent that from happening. A police officer shows up after that's already happened to you. So I'm going to give you an example of a non-violent crime where police are involved. So say that you got your car stolen. So you call the police and the police were actually able to locate your car and arrest the person who stole it. A lot of people would be like, oh my god, Perfect example, we need police. They they are going to solve our problems. We need the police. They found the person who stole the car and they arrested the person. Problem solved. Mm, let's dig a little deeper. So once you do some additional digging on this person who stole your car, you realize that they've actually been arrested by the police a handful of other times and actually left drug paraphernalia in your car. So let's think about that for a moment. This person that stole your car had been policed several times and that didn't prevent you from getting your car stolen. So let's think about something else. Let's think about the drug paraphernalia that was left in your car. Did this person possibly steal your car because they had a drug problem? Maybe that's something that definitely isn't considered when policing this guy. Could we think that maybe he wouldn't have stolen the car if he had help with his drug problem? Probably. Do we believe that policing and arresting this man and throwing him in prison is going to fix his drug problem? Definitely not. Prisons are infested with drugs. So my reason for bringing this up is that if we want to reduce vehicle theft, if we didn't want this stolen car situation to happen, why wasn't this car theft's issue addressed the first time he got arrested before all of this even happened. Instead of continuing to police and arrest and police and arrest these people over and over again, why aren't we trying to fix the problem at the source and prevent additional crime from happening? If this guy's problematic behavior was addressed effectively in his first encounter with law enforcement, and maybe the law enforcement recognized that this guy might have mental health issues or a drug problem, the police could help this guy by directing him to health and wellness services to help him not do these sorts of things and correct his problematic behavior of stealing cars. So I know some of you still have the concern about what happens with crimes that do turn violent. What happens when there's a phone call and a police comes to the scene and the situation does become violent while the police are there. We definitely don't want to ignore those types of situations because they do happen. They happen in our society because we allow them to happen. But if we think about it, police do contribute to the escalation of violent force being used. And police officers' skills and training are often out of sync with what they actually encounter in these, you know, more social interactions or violent interactions. Police officers are mostly trained with use of force tactics and also worst case scenarios. And we have to realize that our police are so militarized and we allow that. We really normalize that when it's really not normal and it doesn't need to be normal in our society. There's actually a really good podcast that I can list down below that talks about how our police training is based off of this one military guy's book. And the book is really violent and has a lot of violent military tactics and our police just really don't need that. They do not need to be using that kind of force on American citizens. Another big topic of discussion is how grossly overfunded the police departments are, other very necessary departments for our communities, and the government definitely prioritizes the police departments. I definitely have to read my notes for this part because there's a lot of numbers involved, but the city of LA has a budget 
budget of $10.5 billion and $3.14 billion of those dollars goes towards the LAPD and that is extremely high considering that $81 million goes towards housing and $30 million of those dollars goes towards economic development. So if you watched my prison abolition video, you would know that a lot of people are put in jail literally for being homeless and not having jobs. But as you can see, LA feels like their money is better spent putting it into policing rather than housing and jobs for their community. So due to all the protests that are happening around the country, we are seeing positive changes when it comes to defunding the police. We're not defunding the police as much as I would like and many other people would like. However, know that protests do work and here are some examples of them working. So in New York, Mayor Bellasio proposed that the police department gets a budget cut of $23.8 million, which sounds like a lot of money, but when you look at it by percentage, it's really only 0.4% of their total budget, whereas education is being cut by 3%, which is pretty annoying but it's still a budget cut and that is a result of protesting and because of the protests in LA the LA mayor said that he would cut the LAPD budget by 10 percent and also in Philly even though they lost a lot of money due to COVID it was like 650 million dollars due to COVID the mayor still proposed a plan to give the police department a 19 million dollar budget increase but because of of protests that is not happening anymore which is amazing just remember you guys that protests actually work peaceful protests actually work and really get out there and support it so a lot of people like to ask the question of why would we abolish the police and not reform it and a lot of arguments that people have about police reform just comes down to adding more rules and as we've seen time and time again police don't mind breaking the rules. Police have also showed us that they are unwilling to reform and very much willing to tear gas and shoot at a group of peaceful protesters who are begging for police reform. So I just don't think reform is possible. The institution has so much racism ingrained to its values and ideas. It was founded on racism. One in a thousand black men are killed by police officers. We really need to abolish the policing system as we know it and we need to get comfortable with that idea. And we also need to recognize that abolishing the police would put more investment into the communities, which which would make abolishing the police happen. More investment in communities would mean less constant policing. So now I'm going to move into your questions. Every week on my Instagram, I will give you guys the opportunity to ask questions that have to do with the week's episode. And I asked the other day if you guys had any questions about abolishing the police. So the first question that I'm going to be addressing are what are the alternatives to community policing? So I'm going to give you a short-term answer and a long-term answer. The short-term answer is that there are actually already so many alternatives to police. Definitely look into what your area has available having to do with basic needs being met, mental health, sexual assault, domestic violence, homelessness, LGBTQ resources. There are tons and tons of alternatives to calling the police out there and definitely normalize seeking out those alternatives. A lot of times those alternatives are way more efficient at meeting your specific need than a police officer. So as far as a long-term answer, we really need to change our culture. We need to change the way that our culture views police officers and policing. We need to build a culture with radically different values and priorities and we definitely see where our priorities lie when we take a look at our budgeting. Police departments are so overfunded, they have such a large budget and we really need to stop normalizing that and stop making policing a priority and make our communities a priority because our communities are suffering. 
because they're not a priority. And by building a culture that prioritizes the community, we will see an inevitable decrease in crime. We need to put money into community enrichment to actually help the mental health crisis and give quality homeless shelters to people who need them. We need better education in these communities and we also need jobs to be created. So another question is what are some job alternatives to police officers? And people can serve their communities in so many other ways besides being a police officer. You can become an EMT or a firefighter or a social worker, which social work has a lot of ingrained racism in it as well, and I think that would be an awesome other episode to do. But I don't think that we should be so concerned with what are other job alternatives for police officers, because our current police officers wouldn't just all of the sudden lose their jobs. Abolishing the police would be a very gradual process. It would have to be a very gradual process in our society. And it would also involve a lot of inevitable reform and defunding before we actually see the police being abolished. Another very common question I got asked was, what happens when I am in an emergency? So first you would need to evaluate your situation and you would know pretty quickly whether you need to call 911 or not. Are you dying? Is someone around you dying? Did you lose a hand? Like, you would know pretty soon if you need to call 911 or not. And we are taught at a very young age that we call 911 if there is an emergency. If you are watching this video when it's first posted or even a few years down the line, we probably still aren't living in a society where 911 does not exist. So call 911 if you are in a legitimate emergency, someone's dying, you've lost your leg. But also remember to normalize those resources I talked about a few minutes ago. Take advantage of those resources that your community has, that your city has. Like I said earlier, the police happen after a crime is already committed. A lot of the domestic abuse reports happen after the domestic abuse happen. A lot of rape crimes are reported after the rape has already happened, sometimes even months after the rape has already happened. And you do not need to call the police to file that report. You can get in touch with someone else who can help you through that situation. So yeah, definitely evaluate your situation. If you are in an emergency and you need a police officer and you need an ambulance, you'll know that very soon and you will react accordingly. But if you can go to those other resources, definitely normalize that. Definitely go to those other resources and take advantage of them because they are there for a reason. And and those are community services that are in place to help you. So I also got a question about how we improve communities to stop the heavy policing of them. And I talked very heavily about this idea in my prison abolition video. And like I said in the beginning of this video, a lot of the ideas of prison abolition and police abolition kind of go hand in hand. They have a lot of similarities to them and that sort of just looks like putting more money into those communities. Better resources for those communities to have access to would inevitably lead to a drastic decline in crime. Black communities are heavily policed and black people are targeted by the police for homelessness and mental illness and nonviolent crimes at a much, much higher rate than white people are. So instead of putting billions of dollars into our police departments, we can put that money into quality homeless shelters, quality rehab facilities and resources for drug addiction or help with mental health issues. Obviously, the nonviolent drug crimes decriminalize marijuana. There is a purpose for me saying that in literally every single video, decriminalize it, De decriminalize it. Let me give you some food for thought. America feels like we are in shambles because of our economy, because of the pandemic. Let's legalize marijuana. The government can tax the hell out of it, make their money back, and people don't have to go to jail for using the drug that everybody uses. And also, obviously, putting money into education. I'm done with my makeup, but I have a few more questions that you guys asked. What's the difference between abolishing and defunding? 
Abolishing literally means to get rid of, abolish it. Defunding means to cut budgets and cut the budgets of police departments. And defunding is the first step to abolishing. So we first need to defund the police so that we can eventually see abolition. You can kind of look at defunding to abolition like, like this. Cut the police department's budget, put that money into community enrichment, watch the crime rates go down, and abolish the need for police because eventually there's going to be such little crime that we don't need our police department to exist in the way that it currently does because we are putting so much more money in community enrichment and crime rates will inevitably go down because of that. So another question you guys had was why go full stop abolishing and not reform? I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier but the American police system is just too far gone it was founded on racist values and it continues to show those racist values today. There is so much corruption in our police department and so much funding goes into making that institution thrive when there is not nearly as much funding for other parts of the community like there should be. Police also show us time and time again that they are unwilling to do their job differently and they are willing to break the rules so giving them more rules would really not do anything. They also constantly abuse their power. A police officer should never be in a situation where they kill somebody. The police officer should not be given that power or feel like they have that power. Even if somebody is guilty, a police officer should never be the one to decide whether this person lives or dies, even if they are guilty. Even if they are guilty. A police officer should never be the person who decides whether this person lives or dies. Just remember to continue thinking about abolishing the police system as we currently know it. Our police system could be replaced with something more peaceful, but our current system is so violent and militarized and we need to stop normalizing that. We need to stop thinking that a militarized police system is normal. We do not need that sort of system in our current society. Another question you guys had was, would we get rid of police altogether? And truthfully, in the society that we live in right now, I don't see that happening in the near future or probably even in our lifetime, but that does not mean that we shouldn't stop fighting for something like that just because we won't see it in our lifetime because what we will see is reform, we will see positive changes, we will see defunding if we continue to fight for police abolition. Police abolition could look different to different people and take on many different ideas before it actually is implemented. But the main goal right now is to really get people feeling comfortable with the idea of it, not feeling scared, not feeling like we are dependent on our police system because that is what the government and what our police departments want us to feel. They want us to feel like we can't survive without them, when in reality a lot of white communities already survive without them on a daily basis. And we also need to imagine a society where our communities and citizens are actually taken care of instead of constantly policed and thrown in prisons. Because currently that is America's only way of dealing with crime. America does not have a system in place that prevents crime from happening. It only has a system in place that deals with crime after it's already happened and we can see that that doesn't do anything for crime prevention and it just continues a hideous cycle. Another question you guys asked was, would my police friends lose their jobs? Simple answer, no. Your police friends probably will be retired or dead of old age before we actually see true police abolition, so I would not be concerned about your friends losing their jobs. But even if police abolition was to happen within the next few years, which is so, so highly unlikely, America does not work fast at all in anything. Whenever we take two steps forward, we 
take two steps back. It's just what America does, unfortunately. So even though this would be a very highly unlikely scenario, the idea of policemen losing their jobs would be a very debated topic. And there obviously would be discussion on relocating those police or retraining them for other jobs. Also, not to be a Debbie Downer, but people lose their jobs all the time. Companies are always dropping people for various reasons without any backup plan. And maybe that's something that America should look into. Our unemployment rate is so high. Apparently in Germany, I heard that if someone loses their job, then the government will pay for them to go to school to learn something else or pay for them to get training in another skill and then they can find a different job using a different skill set. And I think that's amazing. Why can't America do something like that? I don't know. Also, Germany is really advanced in terms of like renewable resources and they're way more environmentally cautious than we are. So they're obviously doing something right over there. So the last question that I got is from somebody who was wanting to know what other benefits there were to abolishing the police besides helping the corruption and also using the funding elsewhere. And honestly, I see those two benefits as the only benefits that I need to see to realize that the police system does need to be defunded and abolished. However, there is another huge reason as to why our police system needs to be abolished, and that is just the fact that there are thousands of innocent people and non-violent offenders who are put in prisons on a daily and used as modern day slaves for prison labor. That is a huge issue and that should not be happening. That is a huge violation of basic human rights. And that process literally allows modern day slavery to happen because prison labor is extremely profitable. Prisons pay prisoners cents per day for their hours of work and sell that labor to extremely large corporations. So yeah, that would be another benefit to abolishing our police system. So that's basically all the information that I have to share with you guys on police abolition. If you watch this video and you didn't watch the prison abolition video, definitely watch that because I feel like these two ideas definitely go hand in hand. And a lot of the goals and plans for prison abolition are very similar if not the same for police abolition. So they definitely go hand in hand and you should definitely watch that. But if you sat and watched this video and you still aren't 100% sure where you stand on police abolition, that is okay. But I do want you to reflect on why you feel like policing is important and sort of reflect on your own privileges. Do you live in a community where policing is heavily enforced? Because our society has programmed us to believe that police keep us safe, but in white communities and wealthy communities, there is not policing in those areas. Those areas already live without police. The underprivileged areas that are constantly being policed, they do not feel a sense of security when they see a police officer driving through their neighborhood. Take the time to really listen to black voices and hear what they have to say about their experiences with police because I guarantee that a lot of people who really are against police abolition have never experienced policing and police encounters the way that black people have. So yes, I will leave you with that. Make sure that you spend time reflecting on your privileges, just reflecting in general, listening to black voices on their experiences. Be empathetic. Remember that this video is very surface level, just an introduction to the topic, and there are so many resources out there that can help you understand this a little bit better. Anyway, that is going to be it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you are subscribed and you have your notifications on so that you can catch next week's Makeup and Wake Up.